Welcome back. Our next guest is an award-winning author whose novel After the Silence was the crime fiction novel of 2020. Author Louise O'Neill joins us now not to chat books, but well. instead to tell us about a very special campaign that's celebrating the teachers in our lives. Thank you so morning, much for Louise. joining us. Morning, Louise. Good to see you. you. Why did you get involved in this campaign in the first place? Well, you know, firstly, when they approached me, you know, I get approached to do a lot of these campaigns. Um, but I suppose teachers are something that's particularly close to my heart because my mother was a teacher. Um, two of my aunts are teachers. My sister nah. is a teacher. Yeah, you know, <laughs> my first cousin is training to be a teacher. Um, so I think I've probably been brought up to have like a very healthy respect um, for the profession and just to really value, I suppose, the importance that teachers have in our lives. Mm. Um, and I think they get such a bad rap. You know, it's all like about the, the holidays and yeah, the, the yeah. hours. And um, whereas actually, I think that like, you know, becoming a teacher is almost like a vocation and not oh. everyone can do it. And I think it's important to acknowledge that. Like, I think especially if you've like, my, both my parents were teachers and yeah. I, like, I would not be a teacher for love nor yeah. money, mm. no way, despite yeah. I, they could give me half the year off and I wouldn't be able yeah. to do it. Because it is quite a challenging job yeah. because you're, you're in charge of molding other minds. You're in charge of educating so many people throughout yeah. their lives and inspiring them as well. And this is what you're, you, we're here to talk about as well, the, the teachers that inspire you. Yeah, no, and I think, look, the thing is, no one can argue that education is really important, but it's not just about math um, or, you know, literacy skills. Like, it's I think a good teacher can make their students feel seen and encouraged. And I think a great teacher can inspire you and sort of push you to you know, reach levels you never thought possible for yourself. And did you have a teacher like that? I did. Who inspired you? I was you? just going to say, the poor woman is probably like, Mortal. please stop talking about me. Because <laughs> I've mentioned her constantly like throughout Great. my career. Yeah. I mean, I was very lucky. I had a lot of really good teachers. Um, but I had one in particular who was my English teacher. Um, and I think, I suppose it was just really lovely having someone who told me and really encouraged me and said, you know, you have a talent for this. And, you know, I really think you should consider studying this at university. Um, and I suppose one particular incident is um, when I was 15, I was in transition year and we were in the library, my school library, um, and she handed me a copy of The Handmaid's Tale um, by Margaret Atwood. Wow. And she said, you know, I think you'll get a lot out of this. And I'd never heard, I mean, I was 15, I'd never heard of Margaret Atwood, you know, had no idea, mm. like, I suppose, the legacy of that book, even mm. at that point. And I went home and I read it. Um, and I honestly, I don't think I'd be sitting here today if I hadn't read that book really? at such a formative age. Yeah, I mean, it completely shifted the way I looked at the world. Like, it made me a feminist. Um, and I suppose it gave me, like, a language to articulate myself with. That's the only way I can put it. Like, it completely changed my life. Yeah. Did, it, did it, was it formative in terms of you as a writer as well? Was that... I mean, I think so. I mean, my first yeah. book is a feminist dystopian novel. I yeah. mean, you know, which yeah. is very much working in the same genre yeah. as Margaret Atwood. So, you know, I think it was just that seed was planted there by, you know, just her, I suppose, just taking the time out of her day to hand me that book. And, you know, the funny thing is she doesn't have any memory of it. Mm -hmm. And I suppose that's the thing wow. with teachers is that, she you know, they do all, all the these... Time. Yeah, exactly. All these small little things and you have no idea, like, the impact that it could have. And this is Miss Keane, by the yeah, way. Yeah, Miss Keane. Just so we can yeah. get full mortification. <laughs> <laughs> get Miss Keane. She's like my, my Mr. Holland who's probably mortified when he's back on the end as well. Um, but when you, you, you look at <coughs> the impact it did have on you and your career, it, it takes uh, something as small as being handed a book. Yeah. Yeah. to set you on the path that you have yeah. gone down, which has been hugely successful. If you go back to 2015, asking for it, a massive, massive uh, breakthrough book for you. Oh, thank you. And even last year was pretty huge as well. Yeah, yeah. Just decided to write in a new genre. I was like, why so not? Why not? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> as you do. Yeah. Yeah. Crime. yeah, why not? You know, I mean, you know, I've been really lucky um, with my career, and I suppose last year it was so odd releasing a book in the middle of a pandemic, um, and, you know, you kind of have no idea what's going to happen or how it'll do, so it's just been really lovely to see that that book has... I suppose people have taken it to their hearts. Yeah. And what was the difference in terms of... Was there a difference in... A, a, in your writing method or your writing, you know, the way you set out to write the book because it was a different genre or was it the um, same thing? You know, thing? I've actually written in, like, I've written, as I said, a dystopian, I've written contemporary, I've written a psychological thriller, I've written a fantasy retelling of, a, of The Little Mermaid, so I'm well, not that really... Yeah. Wow. <laughs> I'm not really sort of, like, confined yeah. by genre. Um, I think that I just like to kind of let my imagination run riot. And I suppose, you know, that was another thing in school that, you know, I think teachers were very, particularly, you know, in English, was, I suppose, just use your imagination. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I think that's such an important part as well. And it's great that you haven't been
mean pigeonholed either. Yeah. That you can actually turn your hand to anything. Sometimes yeah. that does happen if you're well known for one particular type of book and that's mm -hmm. it. Yeah, Even no, for with sure. publishers, you're told this is, your, yeah. this is the way you're going I'm forward. I'm sure they would prefer it, Shalane, if I picked one and said, you know, wrong, <laughs> <not actually. laughs> it might make me easier to like market. <laughs> but no, I mean, it, it is, and what, what, what other like, the, the spheres of interest have you when it comes to that? Would you like to go into screenwriting? Or you, or you have to say I would, yeah. yeah. I mean, I actually would love to do that. Um, you know, it's so interesting at the moment because obviously TV and film, I feel like there's such incredible storytelling being done, um, you know, yeah. in those areas. Um, so I have given it a go, but it's funny. I, it's, it, it's just, a, it's obviously like the formatting of it and all of those things is, you know, I just another skill I have to learn, I suppose. I'm sure you will, yeah. <laughs> the way you're going. Yeah, let's talk about uh, Ireland's most famous news reporter, if we can. Yeah. Um, <laughs> the rest. The the rest of the lads in the newsroom won't be very happy to hear that, let me tell you. Make sure I'm reading his writing, OK. Yeah. Uh, Richard yeah. Chambers. Uh, <laughs> Please tell them I am the best. Yeah, yeah. sorry. <laughs> so he's he's a book out. Yeah, I he mean, does. He now does. tell us, first of all, how, how, did, how did that work? When, when, when he was approached with doing the book and still don't do the book, did he at any point say to you, where do I start? Or no, and he jumped I, in? I, actually, what I found really interesting was about it is that he sent me, I suppose, some of the early drafts, yeah. and I was so nervous because I just thought if this is bad oh, no, what, do you say? what am I going to do I'm like a terrible <laughs> That's a liar like, yeah exactly I was like That's okay we're going to have to break up I'm really sorry yeah. um but um I was just blown away like I mean not only is the writing just so assured like it reads like it honestly reads like a thriller and and even the structure of it, it's just, he did such an amazing job. It's actually quite annoying. I'm like, please let me have one thing, yeah, okay? No. Stop I trying listen. to steal my you, thunder. You still, you've got the awards, yeah, you're still winning, he's, it's okay. Now, he, he's, he's just been shortlisted for an Irish book award. Oh, I'm really, he's Lord. really encroaching on my territory now. Well, he's a Bowles fan, though. Yeah. Does that help as well? Oh, my God. I don't, <laughs> don't even go there, don't mention the war. I can't, I can't hear any more about the Bowles, about okay? the Bowles, yeah. So listen, what's next then in terms of you and writing? Are, you, are we another novel on the way? What yeah genre is it can you tell us <laughs> yeah well i have another uh, novel coming out in may um it's called idol and it's about an american wellness um influencer just that's kind of a world that i'm absolutely really? fascinated I am too. yeah like really obsessed with and um, so that's been what a kind really of, fun what kind um of kind of like story? a spirit like a, she's a she as i said she's a wellness influencer and she writes this essay about a sexual experience that she had with her best friend when they were teenagers um, and the story goes viral and then the best friend gets in contact and says that's not quite how she remembers the night. Oh. So it's about memory and truth wow. and who gets to tell the story um, and all of those things. So yeah, so that's, so next May. that's next May. But until then, I'm very much focused on teachersinspired.ie, yes. which is kind of like, you know, the... the as so the, how the, can people get involved? In yeah, well, um, there's a website, um, teachersinspired.ie, okay. um, and um, the deadline is the 5th um, of November. So we really want people to get their stories in before then of just, of, you know, of an inspiring teacher in your life. And it can be a story, big or small. We just want to hear all of them. Because there's lots of inspiring people out there, there. Are, and, they, and we need there we are. need to bind their drugs. Yeah, no, we do, we do. Even though they're all going to be mortal. Yeah, <laughs> yeah like Miss Keen. We're, like, we're just going to force them to be <laughs> celebrated. We need pictures of Miss Keen at this stage. Yeah. Do, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But listen, Louise, it's Thanks been great catching up with you. Yes. The best yes. love with everything. Thank you so much for having me on. A pleasure, an absolute <laughs> pleasure. A uh, reminder that entries for the Teacher Inspire Ireland campaign close on November 5th. All the information, as Louise said, is on teachersinspire.ie. Now there's lots more to come on Ireland Day this morning. Imelda May joins us after nine. Stick with us.